Hi, this is Daniel Bornstein. Good afternoon. I've got some important information to go over. Recently, I've had a slew of uh, clients reach out to me and inform me that they are the recipient of demand letters regarding a failure to comply with their obligations in response to tenant applicants for rental units who have a voucher in place. I want you to understand that today's webinar is focused upon preventing yourselves from being sued because of your lack of knowledge. There are opportunistic attorneys right now suing landlords and property managers when they discriminate against Section 8 applicants. Today, we're going to put you on notice of how you best insulate yourself from the risk of these opportunistic attorneys and make sure you're in compliance with the law. I wanna let you know that generally, there is what we call a love-hate relationship with Section 8. During difficult times in the economy, many people come to Section 8 with the hope of securing stable rental income and stability and ensuring at least a portion of the rent is being paid by a third party government source. However, Section 8 for many clients have also been a time of stress because at times it's a more challenging relationship with more bureaucracy involved, with more issues including the tenant profiles and what type of dysfunction may arise within the unit and more damage to the unit. And all I can tell you is like life, everything's a compromise. Section 8 may be marvelous. Section 8 also may be a unfortunate experience for you. Most importantly, what you need to know is you don't have the right to summarily reject a rental applicant simply because they come with a voucher. I want you to remember that. You can't just reject someone if they're an applicant claiming they have a Section 8 voucher. Remember, during times of crisis such as the pandemic with more vacancies, Section 8 voucher programs or housing assistance provider programs are attractive alternatives for many landlords. When we have downward pressure and more unemployment, the opportunity to participate in a Section 8 program seems more interesting for many of you. I want you to know the most important thing during this time is that if a tenant applicant comes to you and says, I have a voucher, I wanna apply for the unit. You do not have a choice to summarily reject the applicant by stating, we do not accept Section 8 vouchers that's a violation of law. I want to emphasize, you cannot simply say this unit is not available for Section 8 vouchers. You cannot reject the applicant simply because they come with a voucher. I want you to also know that due to the pandemic and additional federal assistance with housing, we can expect a large expansion in the Housing Choice Voucher Program. And with that expansion will be greater scrutiny on behaviors that are volative of the law, including a summarily rejection of a Section 8 applicant. Again, do not categorically state that you do not accept Section 8. If you don't get sued by maybe a third party government official, you can be sued by a tenant. And I can only tell you that in the Bay Area, there's a proliferation of lawsuits right now with people suing where you have a tenant testing an owner to see if they are summarily rejecting an applicant, claiming that this unit is not available for Section 8 rental, not realizing that that's a civil right violation. Blatant examples in your ads that you may post on Craigslist or any other rental programs, you do not include a statement such as no Section 8 accepted. That's a violation of law. You don't want to include that. 
please, if you are a property manager, you're a broker, you wanna make sure that this type of statement on a published advertisement is no longer part of your protocol when listing units. This will create liability for you, just as if you wrote no service animals or emotional support animals permitted, this is a no pets unit. That won't fall within acceptable conduct. It will expose you to liability. Also, many of my clients are getting potentially subject to liability because of ignorance. They don't know that they're not allowed to state, I'm sorry, we are not accepting Section 8 vouchers for this unit. I'm sorry, we're not willing to accept Section 8. I'm sorry, but this building is not Section 8 available. I'm sorry, but we don't want someone with a subsidy when we consider rental income for purposes of establishing whether you're eligible or not. Income that's coming from a third party voucher program should be considered a source of income and therefore you're not allowed to discriminate when someone comes in with a Section 8 voucher. These examples of improper communication will get you sued. Proper communication. If a tenant calls you up and says, hey, my name is Jane Doe. I am interested in your unit. I want to apply. I want you to know that I also have a Section 8 voucher. Your response, we welcome all applicants. Where can we send you the application? We evaluate everybody. We're welcome to comply and submit a application. We always follow fair housing laws. We welcome any and all applicants. You will be evaluated fairly. Something like that, as an example, is a proper, attractive response to someone who is submitting an application where you know that they have a voucher. Most importantly, you do not summarily reject someone. Here is how the lawsuit evolves. You or your property manager post a rental listing on Craigslist or Zillow or some other listing service. A tenant sees the listing and reaches out to you either through email or a phone call and asks whether you will consider Section 8 housing vouchers for the subject unit. You, out of ignorance, not out of bad faith, malicious intent, but simply out of ignorance, do not recognize that you're not allowed to state we don't accept housing vouchers. So instead of simply welcoming the applicant, you say, I'm sorry, this is not available for Section 8. Tenant hangs up. Tenant's attorney writes you a letter demanding three times the rent and $5,000 in attorney fees to settle the case out of court. Landlord, knowing with the consultation of an attorney that you probably have indeed violated the law by refusing to even consider an applicant with a Section 8 voucher, suggests to you that you consider negotiating a settlement before litigation arises. Tenant and the attorney gets paid. You learn your lesson the hard way by having to overpay for a failure in understanding your rules and responsibilities in looking at Section 8 vouchers. This is happening throughout the Bay Area, and I can only tell you that one tenant has recently sent out 32 demand letters through her attorney for the 32 attorney, uh, 32 landlords who summarily rejected a applicant simply because she asked if you would consider a Section 8 voucher. Don't do it. This is the webinar to inform you of why you've got to be very careful in your communications. Always welcome all applicants. Housing discrimination is a violation of one's civil rights. You have the California Fair Employment and Housing Act. You have the UNRWA Act in California. You have the San Francisco Police Code, the Berkeley Municipal Code. Remember, not only can you be sued for a violation of civil rights, but you then have additional causes of action for intentional infliction of emotional distress, negligent infliction of emotional distress, and therein lies a one-word communication. No, 
we don't accept, or a one word phrase, no, we don't accept section eight, creates a whole litany of liability for you. And generally, if it's in an email, or if it's documented on a voicemail, or if it's a communication that a tenant has heard you state, you really have a very difficult time of overcoming the liability you've created for yourself. Most importantly as well, can you turn down an applicant who has a housing voucher? Absolutely, but it's not because of the voucher that you're turning that applicant down, it's because there are other stronger applicants or in evaluating the applicant who comes with a voucher, you have learned that they have a poor credit history, that they have no work history, that they have terrible references, they have a prior dispute with a prior landlord that causes you not to consider them an attractive applicant. Those are legitimate, credible reasons to, in good faith, reject an applicant with a voucher. What is not acceptable is summarily rejecting an applicant simply because they come with a voucher. And remember, a quality person who comes with a Section 8 voucher is an opportunity for you to gain stable income, stabilize a person's tenancy, and hopefully have a wonderful experience. My job for you is to make sure you understand the rules and don't create liability for yourself. And remember, we are never to impose more stringent requirements for applicants with housing vouchers. We're to treat people the same. And we do not relegate Section 8 applicants to certain floors within a building or certain buildings in your portfolio, but instead you treat it on a single basis per the rental unit the individual is applying for. We are smart. We do not discriminate. We do not create liability for ourselves. And we treat all people regardless of their source of income including section 8 vouchers similar because that's what is required by the law that's what's right that's what's ethical and that's america we hope through this dialogue you have put yourself in a better position to be successful in handling these things this is a very stern warning to you be smart understand the rules and watch your communication to make sure you're not walking into a situation where you have in bad faith created liability for yourself simply because your lack of knowledge. Education is key. Bornstein Law is committed to continuing to educate all people, regardless of whether landlords or tenants and how best to manage your rental properties or how best to understand landlord tenant law. It's my pleasure to continue to assist you keep informed, stay compliant, watch me on social media, become a friend of mine, follow me because I'm constantly providing updates that will make you more educated and smart about your investments or about the opportunities within the landlord-tenant community. Thank you very much, Daniel Bornstein.